Welcome to Zhengzhou, China, a booming city with many local attractions. It's a sunny day, aside from a light smog, and noisy from the traffic zipping by on the busy street. A woman walks hand in hand with her two-year-old son. She's excited to start her weekend shopping spree. The two of them sit down at a bus stop and wait for the oncoming bus. In order to pass time, the mother pulls out her smartphone and starts to play games. But after a short while, the mother hears a loud crack. Startled, she looks up and realizes she's missing something, her two-year-old son. She then looks in the direction of the crack to find her two-year-old son is bleeding to death underneath a white van. Her son ran out when she was not looking. He was immediately rushed to the hospital, but did not make it in time, leaving the mother roadside weeping. This is a true story from the Shanghai Chronicle. And that is why I'm here today, to talk to you about why are we so hooked with our smartphones? This talk will be divided into three different parts. The first part is how I began studying smartphone usage. Second is how do you get pulled into using your smartphone? And third, but last but not least, are tips that you can use after this talk to have a more empowering and efficient relationship with your smartphone. Now, it's pretty easy to scoff at someone who's stuck to their smartphone. Many of us have an image of someone walking across the street, unaware of the surroundings, playing a game like, I don't know, Pokemon Go? <laughs> this might be funny, but it's a different story when it happens in your own life. Recently, I took a big financial risk. I quit a day job in the pursuit of my entrepreneurial dreams. But it was not a yellow brick road. I immediately lost money and relationships. And the more money and relationships that I lost, the more time I spent on my smartphone trying to forget the reality that I lived in. But it wasn't seconds, minutes, or hours, but days where I was trying to forget who I was as a person. That is what led me to study smartphone usage. Some people say we're hooked, others dependent. Some researchers even go so far to say as we are addicted, regardless of the label, to figure out what's, what's really going on, let's look at the number one smartphone using country in the world, South Korea. In 2015, South Korea was reported that it had 88% of its population as smartphone users. In addition to that stat, a government survey concluded that one, out of every South Korean child showed symptoms of smartphone addiction. To put this in perspective, how many of you know someone who's an alcoholic? Well, the thing is, is that the National Institute of Alcoholism states that one out of every 12 Americans are alcoholics, which is a lower ratio than the number of children with self, in South Korea who have smartphone addiction. Now, what is addiction? That's such a big word to throw around. Well, the Science Social Review, a couple of researchers in an article concluded that if you have some of the following symptoms, you could have smartphone addiction. Disregard of negative consequences, chronic anxiety, or lack of impulse control. I'm sure many of us here have a smartphone in either our pocket or our purse. And if you keep checking that during the talk, that is lack of impulse control, which is a symptom of smartphone addiction. Since the United States is increasing the smartphone usage, in fact, we're projected to hit 70% in a couple of years, it's more imperative than ever to understand why these addictions are taking place in other countries. If we do not learn, there's a strong possibility that we will also follow in their footsteps. Now, how do we get pulled into using our smartphones? Well, I'm going to go over two different ways. The first one is sociological, peer pressure. How many of you get frustrated when someone does not respond to a text message fast enough? Come on, yeah. We all do that. Why? Because there's a possibility that someone could respond immediately, so in a way, we expect it. And being a recipient, you want to be a good spouse, significant other, or coworker. So what do you do? Well, you make yourself just that much more available here, that much more available there. And this perpetuates to a point where you're literally on your phone 24-7 because you're trying to keep up with external obligation. You may also notice this is very common in the workplace. Managers literally have their employees on a leash because of the convenience factor of technology. Employees now that bring their work home saying, oh, I have to take care of some 9 p.m. emails. But what we find, though, is that 
moving forward that some countries are fighting back. France recently announced that they are outlawing, banning, emailing for companies more than 50 people on the weekends. That's, that's funny, isn't it? The thing is, is that they state that people have the right to disconnect. People have the right to disconnect. That doesn't mean that you also have the right to disconnect in America. Because of the convenience factor that technology brings to our daily lives, we're expected to be more available through external obligation. Now that's the peer pressure aspect. What about the neurological aspect? What happens in our brains? Well, there's a lot of ways this happens, but I'm gonna go over one for the short talk, and that is through notifications. Yes, text messages, emails, or an app on your phone telling you there's a one degree change in the weather. <laughs> and when you receive this notification, you feel good. Why? Well, a loved one just texted you from across the United States, or you finally figured out that UPS package finally arrived at your doorstep. <laughs> but underneath the happiness, the brain has secreted dopamine. And in an instant, the brain associates dopamine with a notification creating a bond, also known as a neuroassociation. Therefore, when you look for that notification in the future, or rather the dopamine, you look for the notification. And there you go, round and round. Notification, dopamine, notification, dopamine. But the brain takes it one step further after that. It becomes desensitized. Instead of needing 5, 10, 15 notifications to feel that high, you now need 20, 50, or 100. You're essentially running a treadmill of dopamine through notifications. But is that really that bad? I mean, sure, you're stuck on your phone a little bit more and you feel good from all the dopamine hits. Well, Here's an interesting question. How many of you tune me out for a couple of seconds, hopefully not minutes during this talk? <laughs> we do this all the time. Think of a really boring meeting. When someone uninteresting is talking, so what do you do? You say, well, I'm, I'm gonna tune them out for a little bit. So you take out your phone, you look down for a dopamine hit. Huh. You see, you have a rhythm where you expect dopamine hits. And if I'm not fast enough, you tune me out because you've adapted to the rapid stimulus of notifications from your phone, making everyday tasks such as reading, writing, or simply talking to a friend difficult. Out of all places, Microsoft Corporation supports this point of view, stating that in the digital age, our attention span has now dropped down to eight seconds. Headlining, I kid you not, your attention span is less than a goldfish. <laughs> Thanks, Microsoft. William Powers, in his book, Hamlet's Blackberry, points out the caveat to this thinking. As he says, the greatest thinkers of our time that were considered geniuses were able to apply their intelligence and focus, depth, to their work to bear forth new ideas. The ability to focus or have depth is what makes life rich, intellectually, emotionally, or through meaning." End quote. Yes, the practicality that smartphones brings to our daily lives is phenomenal, but it comes at the price of shallow thinking. It is not what we do in the digital world that's so powerful, but rather, outside of the digital world, we are able to analyze, interpret the information for deeper meaning. Unfortunately, from adapting to the rapid stimulus of notifications, we are less able to focus. Now, I know that sounds really scary because now your attention spans less than a goldfish, <laughs> according to Microsoft. So what do you do about this? Well, I put in three tips in this speech that could help out with this predicament. The first one is you get to play psychotherapist for a bit. Write down why. Why do you want to have, why do you check your phone so much? Maybe you're excited because a loved one might text you, guilty because your boss is on your back, or maybe you might want to escape. You want to avoid that. Escape reason. It's an easy segue into addiction. That's the first reason. Second, very common advice, that it's turn your phone off during certain times of the day. First thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, because smartphones have been shown to disrupt sleep cycles, but more importantly, during moments of intellectual depth and focus. Think of lunch with a friend or dinner with your kids. Just put it away. That's tip number two. 
Tip number three is reducing the number of notifications coming to your phone. Yes, I know it feels great being a micro celebrity when your phone keeps going off in front of your friends, but honestly, no one cares except for you. <laughs> what you'll find is as you reduce the number of notifications, your ability to focus rises in correspondence. To review, play psychotherapist for a bit. Write down why. Two, turn off your phone during certain times of the day. And three, reducing the number of notifications coming to your phone. Going back now to Zhengzhou, China, with the woman weeping roadside because of the, of the death of her son. We no longer see an oblivious parent, but rather there is a battle at hand for the mother's attention. On one hand, her smartphone, the other, her son. In this case, the smartphone went out. Yes, the practicality that smartphones brings to our daily lives is phenomenal, but it comes at the price of near addictive behavior and the shortening of our attention spans. Some pay a higher price than others. But as we learn to master this new technology, just like any other innovation in the past, we will be brought to new heights of achievement. And the point of this talk is to reveal those unintended consequences so we can use it as a stepping stone to those greater heights. Thank you.